Thank you, Ruby. A staggering one in three women across the globe have experienced physical or sexual violence in their lifetime. Right Stuff Boxing is uniquely unique as one of the only exclusively female boxing clubs in Staffordshire, where they help to improve the self-esteem of survivors of domestic abuse and sexual violence. Megan Carolan has been down to Stafford to talk to some of the boxers there. Right Stuff Boxing helps vulnerable young girls and women to release their frustration safely, improve self-esteem and have positive social interactions with constructive role models in a competitive and rewarding sport. Ruby is 17 and a qualified boxing tutor. She teaches and advises some of the younger girls in the club. Ruby has been boxing for more than three years and has already competed in several fights. I've had 11 fights and four skills bouts. I've won five. I've um, been competing for about three years, I think. I was in the, the semi-finals for the junior championship. Lucy has only been boxing for the last year, but she is thoroughly enjoying the challenge. This is her advice for any girls who have been inspired to get involved with boxing. People think they have like an idea of what it is, and then in reality it's nothing to do with what they think it is. And it's nice to like prove people wrong, and it like builds up your confidence. But like, I think you should definitely do it, and definitely go forth with it. And it's not about fighting, it's about like technique and like different things like that so but yeah definitely start importantly not all the boxers here have been involved with domestic abuse or sexual violence most participate simply because they enjoy the sport but either way right stuff boxing are all about creating resilience strength and confidence in these young girls which is clearly visible inside and outside the ring. Megan Carolan, Staffs Live. The Bet365 Stadium has rarely seen success this season, but this evening we'll see a side lifting silverware. Rivals Stafford Rangers and Hensford Town meet in the Staffordshire Senior Cup final, both looking to salvage disappointing seasons. Ben Husband looks forward to tonight's fiery derby. The two old foes have never met in the final of the County Cup before, and it promises to be a spicy affair with local bragging rights up for grabs. And we've got a bit of a prize at the end playing on the Brit. And um, with it being the opponent, Stafford, it adds a bit more spice to it. Hence for the beat and Stafford twice already this campaign, and we'll be looking to complete a hat-trick of victories in arguably their biggest game of the season. Stafford manager Neil Kitchen, who is stepping down at the end of this season, will be looking to end his tenure with trophy success. I just think it would be fantastic for, um, for the club to finish with a bit of silverware. Kick off at the Bet365 Stadium is 7.30 tonight and we will have full highlights and reaction on tomorrow's programme. Back over to you, Rich and Ant. With Girls Play Football Week well underway across the country, Staffordshire Football Association have launched a new scheme to increase participation. Danny Barcelona travelled to Stafford to find out more. It's hard to argue that England's Lionesses are enjoying the most successful period in the side's history. And that success is having a knock-on effect on grassroots participation amongst women. And it's schemes such as Staffordshire FA's Mums Play Football that gives locals over the age of 16 the chance to participate. The scheme, announced in March, launched this week across Staffordshire, with nine new centres across the county involved. The initiative is for mums to turn up and play in a comfortable, enjoyable environment and where they can socialise, keep fit is a big one, and just have some fun and play football. And the initiative aims to be as flexible as possible for those who want to give it a go. Mums Play Football Centres are a centre that's there every single week, but they can dip in and out as they please around their own commitments. For more information, or to find your nearest centre, visit the Staffordshire FA website. Danny Barcelona, Staffs Live. Trenton-based golfer Jan Marco Petrozzi was based part of an am England amateur team that romped to victory in the in European Nas Nas Nations Championship at the weekend. The 24-year-old was part of a hugely successful team that won the tournament by 20 shots in Soto Grande in Spain. 16 nations were competing. Petrozzi also tied second in the individual tournament, finished on level par five shots behind his team captain and English amateur champion Todd Clements. The Staffordshire Rugby Union have announced that the County Senior Cup final between Longton and Burton on Thursday has been cancelled. Louis de Monford reports. Longton Rugby Club have endured a tough season. Over half of their fixtures this year 
had been cancelled due to injuries, and despite reaching the final after dispatching Stoke 34-15, the staff's RFU released a statement saying Longton were devastated for having to pull out. Longton Rugby, or the staff's RFU, were unavailable for further comment. Longton's withdrawal means Burton will be crowned the County Cup champions for a second successive season. Louis de Montfort, Stats Live. Down and disappointed were just two of the words Stoke defender Eric Peters used to describe how he was feeling after his side slipped to their 11th game without a win on Sunday. But despite needing at least two wins from their final three games, he is adamant that survival is still possible. You, you can't give up. You can't give up. I've been here now five years and the last thing what I want is uh, to, to relegate with this, this, this team and this club. Um, so I will do everything and the less we do everything to stay uh, to stay in the Prem. And I, uh, I agree with the gaffer. It's, it's not done. And when it's officially done, then it's done. But we keep fighting to the end. Stoke head to Liverpool this weekend where they tasted victory in the Carabao Cup in 2016. And Peters had a strong message for his teammates. If, you, if you're afraid of Liverpool, then you better go stay, stay home and, and, and don't come and play. But I'm not afraid of it. We just play and, and, and believe in ourselves. And, and that's the best thing we can do. Jake Bayliss, Stats Live. And we're now joined by our Stoke City correspondent, Jake Bayliss. Jake, so there's been some big news coming out of Stoke City in the last 24 hours, hasn't there? There has, and uh, the Stoke City chairman, Peter Coates, has come out and said that Paul Lambert and the director of football, Mark Cartwright, will keep their jobs uh, next season, come what may, either if they're relegated or they do in indeed uh, achieve survival, they will be in their roles next year. Yeah, and what, has Peter Kurtz had to, what else has Peter Kurtz had to say about it? Well, he said he, he does sympathise with supporters and with Paul Lambert. He actually said that it's not Lambert's fault that the club doesn't have a goal scorer in the squad and actually criticised uh, strikers Sardo Berahino and Hesse for not performing for the club. Uh, he also said that it, this isn't down to Cartwright's work as director of football. The processes are good. It's just the judgment by the man management that has been the issue at the club. So how will Stoke get on against Liverpool tonight? Obviously Liverpool are playing Roma tonight. Uh, do you think that would have any impact on the game on the weekend? Well, it's an interesting point you bring up, Hans, because obviously with Liverpool playing uh, tonight against Roma, that Stoke will be hoping that you know a few tired legs at Anfield may help their cause. But Stoke have only won one of the last 15 games and Liverpool are unbeaten at Anfield this season. So it's a tall order, but while it's still possible, Stoke fans have got to hope for the best. Thank you very much, Jake. And that's all from the sport. Proudly back over to Ruby.